Hello and welcome to the Car Design News live stream broadcast for this week. First, a couple of housekeeping issues. My name is Maxine Moreland. I'm the editor of Car Design News. If you have problems with the connection today, please log out and log back in again or let us know in the chat panel. If you have any problems with connecting or sound, we advise you to dial in via the phone call rather than dial in using your computer audio. Finally, if you have questions for the Ford design team, please submit them in the questions panel and I will ask them in the final 10 minutes of this hour long broadcast. Hello everybody. Welcome to the Car Design News live stream again. In this live stream, Ford's design leaders are going to conduct a live design review in a virtual space of four Fordzilla proposals. For those of you unfamiliar with the Fordzilla project, Amco Lienartz, design director of Ford of Europe, will be giving you a few more details a bit later in the broadcast. In previous live streams, We've spoken to design studios about how they've been adapting to the lockdown, finding creative solutions in adversity. In this live stream, Ford are actually going to show us in real time how they conduct a design review. I'll begin by introducing the team, then I'll show you a short video clip, pre-recorded, which will show you the virtual environment that we're going to enter. Then I'll hand over control to the Ford team to show us the virtual review. At the end of that review, I'll put your questions to the team. Um, I'd like you to bear in mind that we are all working from home, we are all working remotely, um, and any technical problems you have are probably down to the fact that I live in rural Somerset in the southwest of England and probably have the worst broadband in the UK in total. So it's my fault if anything goes wrong. Um, now, first of all, I would like to introduce Amco Lienartz, Design Director of Ford of Europe. Many of you will know him already. Amco, I'm going to turn your camera on now. And, oh, you've turned your own camera on. Brilliant. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, where Thank are you, you today? Uh, today I'm in my home, in my uh, uh, working from home space, uh, uh, where I'm trying to do as much as I can. And uh, uh, we've done, I've been working like this in the last uh, eight weeks or so, since the beginning of the, uh, pandemic and uh, yeah, it's working uh, surprisingly well to be honest. Brilliant, excellent. Right, I'd now like to ask Kamal, Kamal Kurik. Kamal's also joining us, he's the design director of Lincoln Motor Company. Um, Kamal, do you have camera? I do have a camera. I can see you. I believe you need to turn on my camera. No, it's such a tough one. I've sent you a request. There you are. Hello. Hi there. There he is. Hi. Well, where are you today? Hi, I am currently in Irvine, California. That's where um, I'm, uh, I'm currently living. So I'm dialed in and I'm excited to be with you guys today and share uh, the way we're working and collaborating. And um, yeah, it's quite exciting. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Um, right, next up, we have another participant because it's a full house today. Um, next up, we have Joel Piasowski, Ford Global De Design Director, Cars and Crossovers. Joel, can you hear us? I'm going to send you a request. Joel. Joel doesn't seem to have audio at the moment. Um, as far as I can see. So we might circle back and introduce Joel a little bit later when his audio comes back on. I think that's probably the most sensible course of action. Um, and so last, but by no means least, we're very excited to have Mary Callum with us today as well, who I'm sure you all know exactly who Murray is. He's the Vice President of Design. Um, have we just... Hi, Murray. It's me. Hey, how are you? 
I'm very well. How are you? Good, thanks. This is fun, isn't it? Yeah. I hope. And where are you coming from today, Murray? Um, I'm actually in Ann Arbor, Michigan, which is about 40 miles west of Detroit. So, um, um, but in my office at home, to be honest. Great. Um, Murray, I was hoping that you might be able to give us um, a bit of an overview or some examples, because I know that board design actually has got quite a few um, really good stories about how you've adapted quite quickly to working from home and working remotely and keeping going in, during the lockdown. Can you give us any examples? Of yeah, sure. I mean, it's, it's we've actually done a few few different things, and you know, it's, this has been very experiment experimental as well because you know this is a first for all of us, I think. So, so you know, for example, we've allowed um, designers to take Cintiq tablets home and the, and the tower computers home, so that they can they can sketch and work from home and and create uh, um, digital models at home. Also, color materials, for example, we've um, um, given them. The ability to test samples at their own homes, so suppliers are sending to samples to the to color materials homes uh, with color corrective lights that we've given them, so they can all check these out as well. Uh, also, you know, the, just our method of presentation is changing too. So we're using, you know, PowerPoint, we're using Bluescape, we're using different things as opposed to standing looking at boards. We're obviously looking at digital information. Then, of course, the, the biggest, the biggest, I think, benefit is what we're doing today is uh, we've managed to. Um, give out I think nearly 30 sets of VR sets around the world so our chief designers uh, directors all have virtual reality sets globally so we can do presentations like this and it's and this is something that we had done before even when we were in in work but now to, to be able to do it from home is, is great so, so it's really beneficial I think I think we all still miss the studio we all still miss the smell of clay and we miss looking at real models and uh, and actually just conversing with each other so Although, although um, we miss the sort of uh, the being to being together, I think we found some really good ways of actually interacting and, and working together. I mean, and it really hasn't slowed down the way we work at all, which is great. That's incredible, actually. That is incredible. I mean, it is it is very much um, a kind of sea change moment, I think, in terms of digital technology, in a way that it that it, it we haven't even ever reached a tipping point like this before. No, I think you're right, and I think also that you know we've sort of embraced virtual reality in work anyway, so we were in a really good position to to start using it. So it's not like it's new to us using it from home because we've been using yeah. it for years in work anyway. So it's good. Um, great, Joel. It looks like Joel is now with us. Hello, Joel. So Joel's camera wasn't working earlier. Uh, I'm afraid that was probably our fault that it wasn't working earlier. Um, Joel's the Global Design Director of Cars and Crossovers, um, Ford Global. Joel, where are you working from today? I don't think Joel can hear us. So, <laughs> Joel is... <laughs> Let me Maybe I can answer head. that. Maybe you can answer that. <laughs> I think Joel, I think, is in, uh, is in uh, I think, Birmingham, Michigan, or Bloomfield Hills, which is north uh, north of Detroit, about 30 miles north. Mm -hmm. So he's at his home also, and he's at his home office with the picture of the Mac E behind him, which he's obviously very proud of. But um, so, and he's disappeared again. I'm sure we'll get him back. <laughs> Excellent. Well, you'll meet, you'll, everybody will actually hear and, and see the avatar of Joel in the virtual <laughs> Yeah. It's much um, prettier than Joel as well, believe you me. <laughs> okay, thanks very much, guys. Um, I'm now going to show you a short video clip. This video clip is a recording that was done by the Ford team of the virtual environment that we're about to enter. It's really just to allow the viewers to orient themselves. I'm sure lots of people are, are familiar with working in VR, but maybe some people aren't. Um, it's to allow you to have an idea of the space before we actually dive into it when it can get quite disorienting. The other thing I would like to point out is that because we're streaming um, this material, your experience of the VR as a viewer is maybe different from your experience if you were actually working within it. So if you experience any lag on the visuals, that is down to, I'm afraid, your broadband connection, and it's not reflective of the experience for the board design team when they're working in that environment. Um, in order to give you a better sense of that, we're going we're gonna to record the VR today, the VR virtual, and I'll post it on Car Design News, and you can go back and have a look, and you'll probably see quite a vast difference in just the lag on the visual, but because we're pushing everything through a variety of different pipelines and um, there may be a little bit of judderiness that you wouldn't experience working in, in Ford. 
Um, okay, great. I'm going to turn everybody's cameras off now. And show you the video. Goodbye. See you shortly. Like lightning. <laughs> the main problem, um, I wonder, Vanessa, who's our background help, if you can assist me. I don't have permission to share my screen as it stands at the moment. go like lightning okay so now we're in the, the virtual space that the guys are going to enter for us sneak preview of the cars and the turntables Godzilla. Great, so that's the end of the short video. Um, so I am now going to hand over um, control of the presentation to Jordan, who's very kindly uh, streaming from Ford. He's Ford's digital design lead. Jordan, I'm going to give you control. Maxine, I think everyone was muted during that. Hopefully, uh, Jordan has been unmuted. I am here. Hi. Hello, everyone. And then I think uh, it's all good for Amco to start gathering everyone around the board. 
Okay, perfect. Thank, thanks, guys. Um, welcome in our uh, virtual studio. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Okay, perfect. So we are standing here in front of uh, the sketchboard, uh, the virtual sketchboard, uh, uh, showing a lot of work that has been done so far. But let me give you first a little introduction about what are we actually trying to do here. What we're doing here is we are uh, designing um, a virtual race car for the future. Uh, and we started this project because uh, we have started our own uh, esports team called uh, Fordzilla. And they are at the moment competing in various uh, championships uh, across uh, Europe on several uh, video racing platforms, always under the name Team Fordzilla. Um, we have uh, uh, so what we what we have done is we we are teaming up with them and together with the uh, with the computer uh, with the gaming com community and our own design team we are together designing uh, the car. So we have done that through a couple of polls. Uh, uh, we've done eight polls on Twitter that we received more than two hundred twenty thousand votes that defined that defined the package. So. Where's the engine? Uh, uh, how are we getting in? Uh, uh, all, all these kind of things that uh, gives the guide to how to uh, design this car. Um, so at the moment, we are in the middle of what we call the creative phase. So that phase is uh, going to uh, stay another uh, couple of weeks, um, where we basically keep on uh, uh, refining the proposals uh, uh, that we have. But we also have invited uh, the design community around the world uh, to uh, join it. So you can see here on the board here on the right, there's a whole bunch of sketches that is actually uh, people from, uh, from the non for design studio, so from anywhere that have been uh, st uh, starting to uh, imagine uh, what this uh, P1 uh, will actually look like. So really excited by that kind of input. Uh, we are uh, we want to, we want to recognize uh, how that uh, work is and, and how uh, the enthusiasm uh, is going around around the world to help us co-creating this amazing uh, sports car. All right, is it me or uh, is the floor moving? <laughs> All right, I think we we are back in uh, stable ground again. So, um, Murray, uh, Kamal, Joel, any questions? No, I think I think uh, so far the I mean we've been really impressed with all the work that's been done, not just inside Ford but by everyone else. It's, it's some great work here. And I think what's really nice is that we've sort of given the, the designers a direction that um, you know don't look back at Ford of the past. Try and look to the future as well, which I think is great. So it's really giving us some sort of stretch in terms of where the designers have gone in the cars, and, and obviously the fact that they're, you know, they're, um, you know, they're virtual racing cars. There's a lot of liberties we can take with them as well, which is fantastic. So this is this is a this is not quite the real world, but that's what's great about it. Yeah. So there's a uh, there's yeah. a really, uh, a huge amount of work being done so far um, and uh, there's about uh, four models that we made in, uh, in, uh, in uh, as uh, CAD models so far or that the designers themselves actually made uh, and we'll we'll kind of look at that uh, uh, in a minute. Uh, Kamal you wanted to say something? Yeah uh, no thanks Anko. I think this is really showcasing the way we're working, I think I love the, the, the image board of the sketches and the, guy, the way you guys created it. I think it really showcases the creativity of the team and you can really tell the team had so much fun. I was just highlighting, you know, some of the, even having fun like, like this sketch and, you know, how you, how you, you know, embrace some of the ideation in gaming. I think it's pretty cool, it's pretty spectacular sketches as well, like, I mean, some really good, beautiful visual images which uh, you will see in a bit later translating your models. I think you can clearly tell the team was super energized uh, on, on working on this project. Um, it's really cool. All right. 
So we're not sure if Joel's uh, audio is working at, at the moment. So yeah. Let's see like it's um, I was wondering about that too. Joel, can you hear us? No, let's let's move on. I think I'm sure you can hear us, but we'll, we'll hear from him if we can. Okay, so if I can, uh, if I can get you uh, to the first car, it's the one all the way on the left over there. So let's uh, teleport ourselves towards there. I'm not sure people realize, but that's the great thing about VR. You can teleport yourselves without having to walk over there, which is fantastic. So we're suddenly here. Right. So as you can see on the on the design sketches above, uh, this design is uh, done by Simon. Um, since we're starting for this uh, digital world first, uh, there is uh, real opportunities in letting our imagination and creativity go much bigger. Um, this is due to the lack of many limitations, which obviously exist in the real world when you start to make these kind of sports cars. So, um, look at, for example, the way, and Murray, you've got to be careful because we're going to open the vehicle so it appears right through you. Okay. Let's look at the way that you can access the vehicle. It all stretches out. Uh, you are uh, getting in, so I invite uh, Kamal and Murray, that you feel, feel, feel free to uh, go and sit down and uh, after you set, we can close the vehicle again. Kamal is in there. Yeah, I'm just gonna watch Kamal do it. All right, okay, cool. <laughs> it, it is a so, bit hard on knees, Maury. I know. It's really cool. <laughs> so it, uh, this proposal has space for drivers who are actually the structural element of the car. Uh, the car is purposely built uh, right onto onto them. And the, the front axle is attached to their feet and knees, while the rear axle is fitted to their shoulders, and the driver's helmet is part of the of the of the rear uh, monocoque. So um, while the driver's seat will provide vertical support, but be flexible laterally, so that they feel the forces acting uh, on the car as it goes under the stresses in every corner and every lane. So this means that the design of the car is. Uh, Entered uh, on the drivers and they are separate from each other as well as uh, from front to rear. So the idea is that the two drivers work to, to together as a team. So we don't even know yet if that is in, a, in the computer game we will actually be able to do that. But we almost want two drivers uh, drive uh, together, uh, but also race against uh, each other. In it. So uh, there's a uh, amount of Ability, uh, longitudinally from side to side as the two halves uh, of the car slide past uh, each other, especially in, in corners. So one driver might be fractionally uh, ahead of the other at the end of the race. So this, this concept is really about man and machine uh, forming this perfect uh, symbiosis. So that's, that's kind of the concept. Um, so uh, you, what you're saying. Comments. Yeah. So if I understand right, the, 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 the the person's body becomes part of the car, is that right? So yeah, it, that's uh, right. So, so I suppose it's a the, it's a new term for a stressed member, I think, isn't it? So that's a, so the body is part, is part of the structure, is amazing. Um, yeah. yeah, I think you need to be quite strong to do it. Though. Good, good back muscles, I think. So, but fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but overall, I, I think the um, the form of the car is fantastic. I, think, I love the I love the graphic breakup too. It really it really sort of highlights the 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 function of the of the, the body being the center of the car, which is really nice. Very good. And, and Maury, yes. if I can add to that, if you look at the back end, I think that what's really spectacular about this car, Amco, is like the open nature. If you go behind the vehicle, I think this airflow through the vehicle, I think it's just just something. Really intriguing, I think, the way the uh, Simon was playing with these shapes. And if you look down the vehicle, I think it's pretty spectacular. Yeah, it's quite nice, very purposeful. Yeah, uh, it's, an, it's a, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, misses some mechanics, but that's that's the fun bit about it, too. You, know, you, you could argue how many mechanics you could exactly need, uh, in the virtual world, so uh. And you can get this kind of floating thing uh, uh, semi connected to each other. Uh, I, I agree with you, Murray. It's, 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 it's got a, a real uh, uh, sense of 
uh, proportion, uh, really speaking, kind of follow, follow function, but in a very, very uh, dynamic way. Uh, um, and uh, the color breaking up is definitely a, a real good app. Really good. But what really needs to be developed with this is a, is a seat that that you actually experience these forces on the body when you're actually driving the car. That would be even more fun, I think. Uh, a seat to replicate the sort of torsion of the drug torsion of the body. Yeah. Yeah. We should, uh, we, should, we should partner with some uh, seat, uh, some gaming seat maker and do something like this with it. Yeah. That's yeah, pretty cool. Uh, any more any more comments from the team? Just checking to see if Joel's online yet. Yeah, this is this is uh, oh, you're back, Joel. Back. I'm back. Thank you. Yeah, just this, this looks stunning. Absolutely stunning. Um, guys, it's Maxine again. And um, could I interject without interrupting too much? It would be really great if we could see one of you actually on your VR goggles. Would it be possible for you to turn your webcams on? Maybe, Enko, could you turn your webcam on so that I, we can see you? I time? thought I had, but never mind. Brilliant. Hi, Anko. Yeah. Thank you. We're here. Okay. Um, shall we ready, ready to go to the next one? So, uh, so Anko, can I just ask you a question? Um, the space yeah, we're in, who created the space? I think... Uh, it's a nice studio. Joe can respond to that. Uh, it's uh, for sure people that work for you, Martin. Uh, <laughs> That's good. I, I thought uh, you would have cleaned up the mess at the back, though. I don't know what's happened there. So it's like, you know, special, special occasion. This we could have got the cleaner then. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, we have a studio uh, uh, within the design of all the virtualization and is really promoting all the VR uh, uh, technology and make sure that we can implement it. And uh, these guys have been this uh, kind of uh, airplane hangar uh, that we were able to personalize uh, in the team for the LRT theme. So you can see, in, for example, uh, a hashtag team for Zilla, that's where we communicate on. And that's where uh, people can also uh, submit their uh, designs. Um, uh, so yeah, it's, it's a real cool space. It kind of feels like a like a car show uh, almost, with these huge banners all the way to the to the ceiling, and it really makes you feel uh, uh, good to uh, be. So I'm really impressed with the work uh, that the guys did. Great, right. really good. All right, maybe we can get one. Uh, Livio, uh, you can see also we have an extremely uh, uh, international uh, uh, team. Uh, Simon is from England, uh, Livio is from Eastern Europe. We've got uh, Juan from uh, Spain, uh, uh, Johnny from China, um, Nessa is uh, also uh, is actually from Australia. We've got Adam that's from Britain. So uh, the, these are the, the guys that were making the efforts to actually build them up. Uh, just to be clear for everybody online, this doesn't mean that these four models are, uh, it's the short list of the one we want to build. It's really kind of a work in progress uh, review where there are designers that have been able to build the model uh, to showcase what they've been doing. There's uh, many more. Uh, um, we've got a couple of weeks to uh, so I'm still uh, in the middle of the, uh, the process. All right, so um, Livio, this is your uh, uh, mid engine. Uh, sorry, I've got my kind of. Yep, yeah, coming back. So this is a. Uh, uh, inspired sports car. Uh, traditionally, oh, sorry, just trying to get my 
traditionally that is the architecture of course for a uh, racing car with the best drag and downforce coefficient so uh, designed around this uh, mid engine five package uh, this Ford uh, GTX as he calls it tries to redefine the future of racing cars um, there are some cues like the original uh, GT90 or the, G, the GT uh, and the goal was really to create this uh, vehicle with maximum lapping of adaptability for the racetrack. Um, so, in contrast of the other proposal, I think this one, you know, could almost be ready. You could sign it up, Murray, for production straight away because there is not a lot in on here that wouldn't be really possible, wouldn't it? Murray, can you still hear you? Yeah, sorry, someone muted me. Sorry, I apologize for that. Okay. Uh, no, I think this is, I, I, I looked at this one earlier. I think this is a, there's some really high culture in this car. Obviously, it's a little bit more, you know, realistic than the, the, the first model we looked at. But I think the combination of the sort of, um, the sort of organic and uh, organic elements and, sh and sort of, uh, sort of preci precision lines, I think are really nice in this vehicle. It's really, I love the sort of, are you right? There's a little bit of GT90, there's a little bit of 4GT in it, but it's still a unique proposition and still very modern, I think. Uh, great proportions, fantastic profile to this car. Uh, love the uh, front wing on the, in front of the, the windshield, it's really cool. But I just think, you know, just a fantastic, uh, fantastic piece of sculpture, I think. Beautiful. Yeah, we would all agree. And I think there's also some really exciting things we can, for instance, do with wheels. Uh, that you yeah. wouldn't be able to do in the real uh, world. Uh, we saw something uh, from Simon, and you know, I've been stimulating the team to keep on pushing that a little bit further. And, and uh, you know, uh, we can build in technology light, or you know, uh, uh, it could be used as a communication tool be, be between cars. Yeah. Um, I, I, I understand why you've done them all in white uh, with a sort of similar accent tone, but. I think this car would really benefit from a really deep color to it. So really, most of them would actually just to see the the amount of sculptures on the body side. It's just it's just a white says tends to wash out. It looks pure, pure and sort of modern. But I think you know, sometimes a brighter color really accentuates the the the, the sculpting on the body side. But uh, I think it's really cool, very cool indeed. So I have no idea if we can push the team to actually change the color light. Well, I was, I was going to ask that, but probably someone's going to shoot me for asking that. But you know, maybe <laughs> change the color uh, instantly. But they're all they're all sending me nasty grams now, I'm sure. So um, maybe also something to mention is that uh, we identified pretty early in the process that the rear of the car is probably uh, something that we should particularly pay attention to because that's. The one you want to see, right? When you well, are, hopefully when that's the one everybody else sees, is what you're saying. You know, exactly. Everyone's exactly racing, exactly you're only going to see the rear, so that's good. That's it. So you could argue the front is not that important, but the rear is really important. <laughs> that's what you see in the race. But uh, I think uh, all the team have done interpretations of the rear in a very dramatic and uh, different way. So uh, really, uh, really impressed with that. And, you know, like I said before, this is work in progress. We didn't even start uh, getting it uh, kind of moving and, and putting it in its natural and, and environment and start to uh, uh, put on the lights and all of that. So I, I think it's going to be quite uh, spectacular once we get into to, to that phase in a couple of weeks. I think the other thing, obviously, is, you know, you know, people that use this, the the part they'll actually see is actually the interior, so, so I'm intrigued to know what the interior is like for this car as well. So it's, uh, uh, and obviously I think it's uh, probably a more traditional seating system, but uh, can we look at the interior too? Yeah, so we have two more proposals uh, coming that actually have uh, have an interior. You could uh, be in this one as well. Uh, there is the, the, there's some work in progress here. Uh, again. The old thing, and, yeah. A bit more uh, traditional one, but uh, nevertheless very, very exciting. And then, uh, 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 for instance, the one of Simon doesn't need really an interior because it's your helmet. But what we do learn from the gaming industry is that uh, they want to have different, different views. Uh, some want to be really close to the road. 
someone to see uh, see the haunches of the car in front to make sure that they can have uh, have enough um, uh, uh, when they get in, in into a corner they can actually see where the where the end of the car is um, and uh, we'll we'll we're going to show the other two cars actually have uh, interiors in them so we can uh, we can open uh, open them up as well. And I think, um, Hanke, you said that the, the designers have basically done this in their spare time. Is that right? Absolutely. This is uh, this is basically uh, by pure uh, enthusiasm and excitement uh, in uh, working on it um, uh, at night. And, and uh, during the COVID period, uh, obviously, uh, there was a bit of time as well. And have the same designers created the surface that's, that's done the sketching? Yeah, yeah, this is all uh, done by the designers themselves, Mark. Excellent, really good. Uh, they are, I think they're really proud of their, uh, I, I, their I skill think, sets. I think this is another advantage of the digital tools we got because it really gets them to, you know, in the old days we'd pick a sketch and then they'd model it and create it and play, but now they can actually sort of bypass that and actually show us what the 3D looks like. And then obviously virtual, we can, we can look at a real model. So it's a uh, it's a it's a real advantage, and I think it's a really good good element for the designers to to be able to really showcase what the how they understand three D form as well. Which is really cool. Yeah, and I think uh, um, obviously the designers do the do the kind of first uh, big big surfaces, uh, but um, they did have some help as well from. Uh, yeah, that's good, but that's just great though. From the colleagues, right? Yeah. I just wanted to echo Maurice's words. I think the, the car in the in the plan here is pretty dramatic. So it's a really good plan. I think for the gaming, this is really appropriate. The surface language on this is the uh, has the full heritage, like you said, but it's really, really modern interpretation. Yeah. And I agree with Maury, The side view is quite. Uh, it's very unique, I think. I haven't seen something like that. So I can just see my envision this being like a car you want to drive a game and you know you want to throw it off in different colors. Another great advantage to these models. Sorry. Another great advantage to these models is you don't need to worry about door cuts either, which is great. Yeah, when I look at the side profile here, Murray, it's it's what's really captivating is how it's such a cab forward design. Even though there is wedge in the belt line and the body side, the overall gesture is very horizontal, not slightly dropping yeah. towards the rear. And it's um, such a distinctive profile and proportion. Yeah. And it, it, it almost communicates that there's so much technology to it that you don't need the, the wedge, you don't need a big spoiler yeah. um, rear. Really, really cool stuff. Hi guys, this is Vanessa at Ultima. I'm just going to turn off a couple of your webcams, but I'll keep the audio on so that we can hear you, but it will just take up slightly less bandwidth so we get a bit more flow. Okay, just turn no off problem. some of the webcams, but the audio will all stay on. No problem. All right, I'm thinking uh, let's, we can always go back, back and forth uh, still. Let me, uh, let me introduce the third one uh, from Juan uh, and uh, Johnny. Um, the vehicle is designed for this uh, 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 virtual world uh, first and explores the boundaries uh, of what's possible. Um, so it's designed around the exciting cabin cockpit, uh, and it's kind of cool because basically it's all cockpit that you see here, guys, um, that one has three different positions. Um, Jordan, maybe you can uh, you can hear me uh, in this space and uh, maybe show uh, the three different uh, positions that uh, the car has. So, in fact, uh, while, while driving, uh, the actual exterior of the car changes from a very much careful uh, um, idea to almost a uh, cap wheel work with a lot of dash drives. So it's kind of cool that, that, that you can do uh, throughout the game and uh, uh, have a different uh, view. Um, so in theory, does the driver move with the cabin? So the driver moves further back in the car? 
Yeah, so there is, uh, if, you can, uh, if you can open up the cabin as well, just for a moment, you can see that there's uh, 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 two drivers sitting behind each other. Beautiful. We thought it was pretty cool as, uh, as well to uh, explore and, and see if uh, the gaming community would be uh, 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 interested in seeing something like that. Um, and then it's got some really cool uh, uh, interior uh, features, uh, as you can see here with the steering wheel and the, the, the controls. I, I apologize for not being a gaming expert, but are there games where you can be a passenger on these cars? Do you know, does anyone know? Um, I think you should. Uh, yeah, I think you should too, yeah. It'll be fun, yeah. It's like, you know, it's like the, uh, the two-seat indie car, you know, you can sit in the back and watch and have someone drive you around. It'll be fun. Yeah, yeah and especially since uh, what we see a lot in the gaming community is, uh, as you know, um, uh, when there's championships uh, happening uh, before COVID, uh, there were actually huge spaces where people gather and watch together the screens and yeah. be, be part of the race. So I could totally imagine to bring that a step further uh, so that uh, you can uh, uh, drive uh, uh, together in a very, uh, very uh, exciting way and, and get the same kind of thrilling experience. Is, uh, I'm not sure what the audience is seeing, but is Jordan controlling the camera for the audience? Is that what's happening? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Okay. So, Jordan, did you see the interior when you opened that? That's really cool. Yeah, where you are. Yeah. I think uh, uh, the, it, there's, in the design, there's something really uh, simplistic to it. Uh, yeah. I think seeing the previous two that have a, have a high level of complexity, super high depth, uh, um, and, and, and surfaces going in and out, which is obviously getting a really dramatic uh, sense to it. I think uh, Juan did a good job to kind of try and, and, and simplify it uh, and do a totally different type of uh, 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 vehicle. It didn't stop him from uh, really quite uh, doing a lot of um, uh, 3D, the way that, this, uh, uh, that, this, that the body side is kind of twisting into the front uh, in a, in, a, in a very fluid way, yet uh, pretty structured. And, and you know, all these ideas of, of where to put the glass out, where to put the lights, you know, we can really push the push the boundaries uh, 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 doing it in a, doing that in a very different way. So I'm very appreciative of this design as well. And actually, I'm sitting in the cab, and the the, the view from the, the cab is fantastic when you see the sort of fenders moving over the hill for that. Really cool. I don't know, did someone arrange me to be somebody three feet shorter? Because it's, uh, it seems, well, it is it with interiors. Very cool. Um, Any other comments? Yeah, no, uh, I just want to add, like, I think the, the profile is, it, this is quite an innovative silhouette, I was just wondering, in looking yeah. at the side view. I have seen anything like this, Maury. No, like, I was thinking that it's, 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 it's probably the one that initially feels the, the sort of the less beautiful one, but in the way it's actually, it's, it's very original in terms of it's, you know, it's, it's taking a few sort of traditional, you know, sort of car design sort of rules and sort of turning their head a little bit, but I think it's actually, it's actually probably at least the most dramatic one and intriguing one when you see it, especially with the, the moving cab. But again, I think, uh, I love the graphics that sort of break up of the body side too. So it's, uh, uh, you know, and I think you know the the feeling of moving that cab while you're driving would be would be quite quite sensational. I think. Yeah, you you yeah. Is that, is that, you're well defeated. You actually want to feel it in the in like a real life. Right? Yeah. Quite amazing. Now, Emco, is it possible to show the interior view? I, I was really intrigued with the interior, the way you're sitting behind each other, the experience, I think, could be probably really amazing. I really like the, the even the steering wheel, the way you guys yeah. integrated the functionality on there. I think there's some really clever detail when you're going yeah. up close. Jordan, can you get you down to this position, that. right down to the seat of the, the driver's seat? I'm, I'm sitting right behind you, uh, Mark. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's really uh, spectacular, and it shows also uh, 
you know, in a space like this, you can do something really special because you've got the wide body, but you've got a. Yeah. a, a is there any way you can move the cab interior. while we're sitting in it? Can we move? Does the interior move with the cab? Oh yeah, it does. Cool. Yeah. Very good. I think if anything, you can pull the cab even further back. Yeah, I, I think it'd be yeah. more dramatic having its real sort of you know rear rear dash tracks on it. I'd like to see that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking as well. Yeah. Maybe you know maybe shift the, the move from sort of the middle position to a further back position. I think would be more dramatic. Let's see how far we can uh, we can push it and actually uh, until it, we feel uncomfortable pushing it all the way to the yeah. back. And yeah, yeah. 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 And it's got this really nice kind of a, a central wing on the back that is uh, uh, going away with going with the same uh, movement. You know, it's it's kind of language that that uh, you would normally not do in the real world, but it's really really quite cool. I think because of the short front end, I think the view is quite spectacular. Yeah. You do you do see you do see the road immediately in front of you. I think yeah. it's pretty cool, Michael. Like this way yeah. when you're in a driver. The, the team at Ford, we've had lots of questions come yeah, through okay. on the chat, and it would be fantastic to be able to put some of those out to you. Um, yeah. If you oh, yeah. let me know who the most appropriate to answer and I'll make sure that your microphone is switched on um, as we Bill was having a couple of challenges with his microphone so if um, it's possible for any of you to pick up those that might have been for him that would be great so the one of the questions that's come up is which system you're using is a very popular question very frequently asked is that something that you guys are able to share you mean to build a yeah, you're talking about the VR system, or are you talking yes. about the, uh, the, the digital? Yeah. Uh, Jordan is probably the best one to answer that. Yeah, Did you say Joel is? Here. Can you hear me? Uh, Jordan, thanks. Yeah, so our VR system, as you can see on the um, director's heads there, is the HTC Vive Pro. Um, we have a couple different ones out. Um, as Maury said, we have about 30 deployed globally right now. Um, but this is what we have. Um, on everyone's head today. And it's running um, through VR, through VRED, um, the Autodesk software. And uh, yeah, it gives us some really cool results. And the great thing about VRED is that, is that, you know, we can help designers present their models in VRED even when they don't have the uh, headsets on. And, but, you know, the, those of us who have headsets can see them. Yeah, you can walk around them and see them three dimensionally. But, but other people can also see the, 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 the the sort of two-dimensional aspect of them as well so it's it's it's, it's, a, it's a great sort of tool to, to, to use both in 2D presentations and 3D presentations. Any other questions? Uh, Jordan, can you maybe also talk about the programs that we build in policy? And another Just question that's come through which is quite an interesting one given the circumstances that we're all facing with work from home. Yes, there's another question. Carry on. Yeah, so to quickly answer Amco's question, Sorry, the designers to ask and... a couple more questions. So, Joel. So, is Jordan's mic on? Yeah, can everyone hear me? I can. Okay. Yeah, so to answer Amco's question there, the designers and the sculptors that worked on these um, use a lot of different programs, um, Autodesk Alias, Autodesk Speedform, uh, Maya, and some other tools to build surface and traditional and some kind of quicker, more iterative ways using polygon subdivisional modeling, things like that, which really empower the designer um, to be able to work smarter and faster. Yeah, you're right. about the VR uh, quality. I'm not sure if it's coming across to the viewers on the screen. Yeah, the fidelity is really quite high, and so you know the environment that we're in. This is just one of uh, many environments we are able to review models, uh, and we've got uh, studio courtyards from around the world. We've got uh, various scenes uh, out in out in the wild, uh, country road. 
um, urban environments, uh, different landscapes. And what that helps us to do is look at the, uh, the digital models in virtual reality under different light sources with uh, different reflective patterns across the surfaces. And it really gives us that ability to uh, really check everything virtually uh, as we wouldn't be able to, uh, for example, if we were in the studio just uh, in our own uh, respective courtyards. So uh, it, it certainly has a great place in how we review and, and analyze uh, the, the designs that we, uh, we create, as well as the combination of uh, looking at the physical property uh, once we're able to do that again. So really great uh, quality, and it's obviously improving step by step uh, quite, quite regularly, so it's only getting better and better. Okay, so maybe we can just thank you, Joe, for that uh, explanation. Can we go to the last one? Um, uh, I think we are about an hour in, so we shouldn't drag uh, too too long. Um, so the last one is from Nedzad and Adam. Uh, they teamed up uh, a very contrasting uh, way between the exterior and the interior. But it's kind of this this jet um, on wheels. Uh, uh, and again, uh, I'd like to remind everybody that all of this is very much work in, work in progress and, and there's a lot of development that students are, are still going to uh, do. But what's cool about this is that it's kind of like a first, uh, first of sight. You see this from a distance, you can really uh, see something that you've never seen before. It's kind of alien. It's not like uh, some of the other cars where you say, well, okay, that's a car that's coming closer. Uh, it is amazing in its own way. Um, so this is really tight, uh, tightly uh, designed around around the cabin, um, kind of a cabin with uh, that is slightly more narrow than a Ford GT. Um, and uh, you know most of the uh, directors that you uh, that you see now have somewhat uh, had an influence on the GT and. and I remember on the interior, it's a, a great uh, uh, narrow uh, cabin, and you sit shoulder to shoulder. And that that feeling, I think, uh, is uh, captured uh, on the inside. And then on the outside, um, uh, you know, this kind of uh, color break up where there's like a, a black floor that's that's got this uh, kind of kind of arrow shaped floor, and then this. Uh, really lightweight uh, cabins sitting on it. I thought, in contrast with the other three designs, it's really a nice, uh, what we call a bandwidth of design proposals that really uh, 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 pushes the limits in, in, uh, in, a, in a very different, uh, different way. Yeah. This one is really nice, Amco, if I, if I may. Uh, I love the, how pure the concept is. Yeah. I think I just did great, great, great work on uh, even making it look aero efficient, but it's very dramatic, and I think it's it's very unique in its proposition. Um, I, I, it's probably my personal favorite, to be quite honest. I really like the way he integrated the lowers with the upper, the way it kind of uh, integrates into the upper cabin. It just looks so light and efficient that you know you're going to be on the racetrack. You'll be you'll you'll be standing out in the into the digital world. And I think this car feels really fast to me. And I think it puts a lot of love in the way the design and agile integrated some of the details. I think really nice job. Really good. Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree with Kamal. This is the one I think that you can instantly sort of fall in love with. It's just it's just, a, just the balance of the car, the graphics, the, the layout, everything. And I, I had a look at the interior. The interior is fantastic too. So I love this sort of seating position with the heat up real sort of Formula One stuff. And I, I see this really as a, you know, a true race car in terms of the exposed wheels and everything else. And, the, and even the sort of a, the wing at the back, the, the longitudinal wing was sort of really nice. Just just the overall balance of this car is just everything everything feels quite right about it. If anything, maybe the front end's a little flat, but I think the, I think the rest of the car, I, I love the, the sculpting in the car. And as Kamal said, the simplicity of it, it just, yeah, you know, we don't need to get too fancy with some of these things. It's just, just you know, it's an instantly likable car. That's I feel. Uh, Jordan, would you able to open uh, the cabin and uh, so we can uh, spend just a minute on the interior? Um, 
uh, and maybe people can see it, but uh, here uh, Adam uh, wanted to, you know, kind of a, 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 a philosophical way of uh, making the making the pixels of the computer into a big bigger grid uh, that gives you and the sport it and a and a digital feel to it, uh, but at the same time a very new 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 type of environment. In a way, it's also uh, you know really it's really modern, and at the same time it also gives you that um, kind of kind of almost kind of an 80s or 70s feel to it, but in a very, very new way. Uh, so we, we really love how he, uh, he's been, uh, he's been uh, creating this kind of padded uh, uh, in, environment. When and, I think, think, yeah. and I think the interior oh. goes with the exterior as well. It's what you sort of expect, the sort of very simple, no-nonsense sort of simplicity is sort of carried through the interior too. I love the, I love the sort of segmented the sort of um, sculpting in the interior. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like um, Joel's Corbusier chair here when you sit in it, you know, with your feet up in the <laughs> beautiful. Yeah, so so the we did we did uh, through the Twitter polls did a back did a did a Put out a question like, would you like to sit in it like a kind of a Formula One style car, or would you like to sit in it more normal? And obviously, they chose the kind of Formula One. So you really have your your feet are almost against that IP there uh, once you are really sitting in it. Um, what and what I, I think what I'm seeing as well is that if you look at the exterior, these are this is actually see through on yeah, the, the lower, so you can actually see right down to the, the front spoiler. This the, the lower area below the white band is transparent. So when you sit in the car, you can actually see right through there. Yeah. yeah very yeah, nice. Yeah. You see that? So it's a, it's yep. a, it's a very yep. a, a subtle way, in fact, to uh, give, uh, give the driver more information uh, while making it more lightweight and, and uh, you know, uh, each each of these cars have new interpretations of how to kind of play with inside and outside, and, and how you uh, how you uh, emphasize that uh, opportunity. So, Amco, I mean, I know I know you don't want us to make any sort of decisions today, but what's the next step in this when once once after today in the program? So we've got about five weeks to go before we have to go for, for a go for one. Uh, so again, this is not necessarily the shortlist. You, can, you have seen on the schedule many other proposals that actually are on the way. Uh, this is these were simply ready for today to uh, uh, to sh uh, share with the world. Um, we'll also I'm also hoping to, get, to continue to get this uh, input from the outside as well. Um, yeah. And we are working on a way of how to integrate that into uh, into our work and and, uh, and, uh, and give them uh, the credit uh, that they deserve uh, moving forward. Um, and then uh, in the next phase, uh, we'll go back to uh, the design community and the payment community as well uh, on designs of uh, of delivery, uh, the name, uh, uh, and the way we can. Uh, we can uh, continue this into a real, uh, real exciting uh, car. And then, um, obviously, uh, if somebody was wondering, uh, obviously this is a car that we want to get into uh, one or more uh, computer games. So we are uh, working on that, making sure that that's going to happen. Hi guys, it's uh, Abel here. Um, we've got so many hey. questions for you. It is All unbelievable. Right. Um, I think Jordan, I think if you can stop sharing the screen now, I've got so many questions, guys. If we can just get to some of the questions. Um, I was, I was enjoying looking through. at this car. Okay, all right. Okay. We've got so many questions. If you, you right. want the good news, guys? Yeah. We've had um, over 300 likes um, of your work. There's been lots of love hearts coming your way. So, great job. And there's so many people commenting what a terrific job you guys are doing. Um, one of the questions I have is, um, how are you doing using this sort of review with the senior board level people? Are you using this sort of environment? Probably not as much as we'd like to. I think there's, and I think you, 
as you get used to this system, people get more comfortable with it. There's a couple of our senior members that are comfortable with it. So we are we are using this uh, to make some you know major decisions. Um, I think there's still a growing sort of experience there, and uh, but it's certainly starting to happen. And I think obviously this uh, the era of COVID nineteen, everything is probably going to accelerate that, and it's part of our target for the next couple of years to actually use this tool a lot more. It's you know it's especially especially um, um, useful in interior um, reviews as well, where you can you know, we can't really do it in this environment, you know. Interior views, we can switch around color and materials, we can switch around trim, we can switch around components, and the same with the exterior. So the, the ability to be able to compare and contrast instantly is, is really good with this, which is something you know, that it's very difficult to do physically. So so in that sense, to, to help them make a choice, it's actually really good. And we've also used it in research process as well. So um, we've, been, we've been using it in market research, and again, there's been a, we've been experimenting with this probably for the past five years. And it's getting to the point now where we are actually using it to, in market research and getting, getting. We think the 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 equal response back that we'd get if it was physical models. And then uh, on the other side uh, of of the kind of chain, if you will, uh, in the studio, in my studio, I've got uh, two areas right next to the these binos, and they they are in there sometimes, like for. A, a couple of hours and going back and forth and really using it for the creation. So it's not just a, a, a presentation tool, a review tool, it's also an actual creational tool. So that, that's that's really uh, impressive. Okay, uh, I've got another guy. Uh, just carry on. Carry on. Sorry, carry on. Carry on. I just want I just wanted to add one more thing to Maury's point. I think it's it's really wonderfully the way that we can collaborate nowadays. You know, even with our colleagues in China, I think, you know, in Europe and then America, I think that works really well, I have to say. And then this virtual collaboration really empower us. And, and, and we've been doing this, like Maurice said, for many, many years. But now due COVID, obviously, we've been accelerating this immerse, immersive way of working. I think it, it's a really powerful tool. Um, and, and I have to say the entire team really love using the VR because uh, on the 2D sketch that we all appreciate as designers, I think just going into this virtual 3D space and evaluating the models, uh, it, it's very important. You know, to just see the speed shapes like Amco and his team has created. Uh, it, it, it's getting really, um, you know, almost as close to the evaluating the real properties. And, and I'll be honest, I mean, I think a few of us were even slightly, you know, probably a few years back, slightly dubious about whether this was a I, I, you know, just something nice to have as opposed to something that was a necessity, and I think it's now really becoming a necessity. Yeah, you know, so I've got, I've got a, I've got another question. Um, once the Don't system has been set up, once the system has been set up in your house, how easy was it to set up, and how easy is it is it to maintain um, as you were working remotely? Uh, it Europe, uh, we had everybody set up within uh, within two days, so it's really quick. Yeah, and, and if I can set it up myself, then anybody can set it up. Believe you me, because so it was a, so it was a, and I, you know, it took, I had a couple of glitches, but uh, we've got great people that we can just send a make a phone call to, and they, they help fix things. And once it's set up, it's it's set up. So the you know, if you've got the um, uh, the uh, controllers and everything plugged in all the time, and you've got the um, the uh, monitors fixed to the wall, and then, then that's it set. And it's actually okay. even if you have to use the reset. Um, you know, so another yeah. back again. Um, Maury, could I ask one of the questions that's come in is is confidentiality an issue when working remotely? Um, and if it, you know, obviously it is, but what systems have you put in place to ensure confidentiality? Well, it was obviously it's obviously a concern that we've had in terms of you know is it confidential and you know again I'm not the expert in this but we trust our IT people to to give us systems that are you know are, are confidential and require you know passwords to get into etc cetera, etc cetera. And, and so I'm sure uh, you know they would not be letting allowing us to use it if there was any kind of uh, any kind of confidentiality issues but again I'm probably not the the expert on that I just trust trust the guys. 
uh, but again, uh, Murray, to to add to that, um, I think, uh, uh, and I've said it before, I've got a huge respect for our design community that has been working from home because they've been working in to assure that confidentiality into basements, into yeah. into attics, into bedrooms during the whole day, all by themselves, and 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 keep on. Uh, having that creativity flowing and, and, and really keep their enthusiasm and motivation in this, uh, in this uh, uh, difficult time. But keeping that confidentiality is, has, has been quite a, quite a challenge, but uh, so far so good. Great. And just, um, it might seem like a blindingly obvious question to you, but how does anybody participate in the Fordzilla project? If anybody watching this wants to participate, is that still possible? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, basically, uh, uh, people uh, can participate through or connecting to the team captains uh, of the Team Fordzilla uh, uh, team. So basically, uh, you can find that through uh, hashtag Team Fordzilla. Uh, and then uh, there is a website as well, uh, teamfordzillap1.com. Uh, where you can find all the stuff that anybody needs to know about the, the design brief, what has been said so far, uh, where we are in the process, uh, and uh, how to uh, participate. But basically, the short answer is, do your creativity, uh, 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 put it like we do, uh, straight away, online, hashtag uh, Team, team uh, Fordzilla, and we working with you on uh, getting it to the next level. And I should point out that this is really a Ford of Europe design initiative, you know, thanks to, driven mainly by Amco, I think it's been a fantastic thing. And uh, I think we're a little jealous actually, because, uh, but, so we are looking as, you know, can this be something that could be more of an annual event and then actually expand it to our design teams around the world. So I think, you know, kudos to, to Amco and creating this. It's, it's creating a lot of buzz. And as you can see, I think it gives our designers to be able to, show their talent and ability publicly, which you know, people very rarely get to see. So it's, it's a great, great opportunity for our designers to, to, to show their skills. I think, you know, a lot of the work that we do in the studio, people very rarely see and they only see the end results. So that this, this is a great way to actually, um, you know, really allow people to, to show, show the world what we can do. Yeah. Um, right, I think we're going to, unless anybody um, wants to add anything else, I think we're going to wrap the webinar up now. Um, I'd really like to thank everybody for watching. Thank you for joining us. It's been quite an ambitious project getting this online and actually the collaboration with Ford, Ford Design, are just, you guys have been incredible during this and um, really agile and really nimble as well. Um, so thank you. Thank you everyone for watching. Um, I don't, I'm sure, I, I don't know if Abel's still online, but you know, if if you'd like us to answer more questions, I'm sure we can do it, and you can you can post them online. So so you know, feel yeah, free to yeah. to send us what they are. Okay. So I thought what I'd do is I'll send you any of the questions that we didn't get around to, or that we we've run out of time to answer to answer here, and then I'll work something up on Car Design News. We will be posting this live stream on Car Design News, and we're also going to post a video that represents what the four guys would have seen. So obviously. You may have seen some lag as watchers today. We'll also be posting the, the more seamless experience that they were um, within in VR uh, on Car Design News as soon as we can get it online. Um, thank Hello. you, Murray. Thank you, Al. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Amco. Um, and thank you to all of the supporting team at board, actually, for enabling the broadcast because there's lots of guys and girls behind the scenes as well. Um, thanks, guys, and um, join us next week. Next week's live stream will be discussing the College for Creative Study planned virtual careers event for design graduates, which is a great initiative as well. Thanks, everybody, cool. and goodbye. Thank Have you. a great it's day. A pleasure. Bye. 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 Hi, Joe. Bye, Moray. Bye. Thanks, Abel. That's all right.